apparently I'm the first uh, non-member of Congress to be on the agenda, so, uh, uh, but it's great to be here and an honor to be among uh, so many uh, co-laborers in um, a wonderful and uh, noble cause. Uh, but as mentioned, I'm the head of a group called uh, Institute on Religion and Democracy, uh, which uh, is an advocate uh, for encouraging and, uh, when necessary, pressuring uh, churches and Christians and religious groups in America to be more outspoken on behalf of religious liberty and uh, rights of conscience for people around the world, especially for uh, fellow Christians. Unfortunately, uh, there has been too often uh, silence on this issue, even about persecuted Christians by Christians uh, in this country, as uh, Congressman Wolf uh, just uh, mentioned. Uh, we were founded 35 years ago in response to that silence by many of America's uh, great churches uh, during the Cold War, uh, when uh, too many uh, senior Christian leaders preferred um, accommodation or collaboration uh, with the persecutors uh, of Christians in the old Soviet bloc and uh, elsewhere, and uh, fell silent about uh, religious liberty. Unfortunately, uh, that situation has continued in too many areas of America's uh, religious life, even since the Cold War uh, ended, uh, whereas uh, communism and uh, the old totalitarianism so no longer so much uh, are as much that the persecutors uh, today, of course, it, we have uh, radical Islamist regimes and movements, uh, foremost among them ISIS, who are the tormentors of Christians. And again, too often uh, there is silence or uh, not enough outspokenness by too many of our great religious institutions and religious leaders in America. Uh, the reasons uh, are many. Uh, in some cases, it's a preference for uh, personal relationships uh, with the persecutors. It's a, a faith in uh, goodwill and uh, an overconfidence in one's own relationship building. In many cases, it's a case of uh, uh, guilt, uh, historical and cultural, about the West and about uh, Christianity, and a reluctance or an inability to appreciate that uh, Christians can be the victims or not, or not necessarily always um, the oppressors uh, themselves. I ran into a little bit of this uh, just last week at a, a great convention of uh, one of the great denominational affiliations, a global gathering, uh, hundreds of people from around the world, a workshop on the relationship between Christianity and um, Islam. And uh, the U.S. persons there uh, were emphasizing uh, the historical guilt of Christianity. And uh, the Ku Klux Klan was one uh, expression of uh, the negative and sinister aspects of Christianity. And the internationals in the audience, in particular a Nigerian and a, a Pakistani, responded that you don't understand. Uh, you speak from a majority context. We speak from a minority context working against an ideology that seeks political domination. So it was two different, uh, completely uh, wor different contrasting at odds uh, worldview, even within one denominational tradition that I'm afraid is too common. It's um, unfortunate that there's been a trend uh, in American uh, Protestantism and including and especially evangelicalism, especially in areas involving uh, young evangelicals that in convocations involving uh, social justice and initiatives involving a political witness that uh, persecution and the plight of suffering Christians does not even register on their agenda. Uh, so many other issues, uh, but for some reason, and I can speculate why, uh, what some of those reasons are, uh, a tremendous uh, timidity or a bashfulness about speaking about um, uh, persecuted Christians and uh, a preference, especially among young Christian people, to only speak abstractly about human rights uh, for all people everywhere, which of course, uh, definitely we affirm, uh, but when Christians by many measures are the most targeted and most persecuted religious group uh, globally, especially there is an urgency about speaking out about uh, their plight, and if we are Christians ourselves, we certainly have a special spiritual mandate to speak out on their behalf and to stand in solidarity with them. So, um, we as uh, American Christians and uh, groups uh, as represented in this room have an ongoing uh, responsibility to provide uh, the moral and political and theological arguments as to why uh, the body of Christ in America must uh, continuously uh, stand in solidarity with the persecuted parts of the body of Christ um, around the world. And I look forward to working with uh, many of you uh, in the days ahead uh, on that great issue. Thank you so much.